Hey, Yame Jack. It's time to take care of the business. Well, in my last video, a lot of you guys asked for a bee farm. I was designing the aesthetic bee farm in 1.20. Then I realized that I should try the new auto crafter in 1.21. With the new crafter, I can automate the honey block production. You don't have to make the honey block manually and replenish the dispenser with empty bottles. So I took the challenge and made this design with my potato redstone knowledge. My honey block farm is 100% fully automated. It produces around 55 honey blocks per hour in a scale of 20 beehives with the raining and daylight cycling. Just so you know, bees do not come out of beehive when it's nighttime or raining. The crafter turns the honey bottles into honey block for you. The entire farm does not require a lot of empty bottles and it replenishes the dispenser automatically. I also add an anti-overflow system to the honey block storage. So, in theory, it could run forever without breaking. Don't get intimidated by the size of it. It is actually super easy to build and it does not require a lot of rest on. The hard part is to find or make 20 beehives and 3 stacks of hopper. The rest on design is pretty simple and easy to understand. Let's explain how this works. First, the bees collect pollen from the cherry leaves and make honey inside the beehive. The comparator detects the honey level of the beehive, and each honey level adds one redstone signal string. A beehive ready for harvest has a honey level of 5, which gives a signal strength of 5. That's why I put a composter here with a signal strength of 4 and set this comparator to subtract mode. Now this comparator will activate the dispenser below only when the beehive is ready for harvest. There is always an empty bottle inside the dispenser, and it becomes a honey bottle after harvesting. The hopper below the dispenser is an item filter for honey bottle, so it will pick up the honey bottle only from the dispenser. Then, the honey bottle passes through the item filter and head to the crafter. Meanwhile, this redstone torch turns off for a brief moment when there is a honey bottle passing through the item filter. The hopper above the redstone torch has an empty bottle inside. It sends the bottle to the dispenser when the redstone torch is off. Then, this comparator goes off because the hopper is now empty. This allows the upper hopper to pick up a new empty bottle from the minecart with chest. The system is now ready for another harvest. All the redstone components are simple and they work in perfect timing. It is why each beehive only requires two empty bottles and it saves you a ton of glass. The farm will not break since the dispenser will never run out of empty bottles. Now, let's take a look at the auto crafting part. All honey bottles from the farm go through this nile hopper and into the crafter. Similar to the beehive with the composter, the crafter only activates when there are 4 honey bottles inside. After activation, it spits out 4 empty bottles and 1 honey block to this hopper in front of it. Below this hopper is another item filter for honey block, so the 4 empty bottles will go into the vertical auto dropper. This auto dropper sends all the bottles to the minecart loader above. This power rail turns off when there is any empty bottles inside the hopper. Then a minecart with chests will come and stop here and pick up all the bottles. The power rail turns back on and sends the minecart away when the hopper is empty. The bottles are now back to the system to be used again. For the honey block, it passes through the item filter and goes into this auto dropper. The auto dropper spits out the honey block to the final storage chest. This auto dropper is actually the anti overflow system. If I just use hopper here without this dropper, the honey block will eventually fill up the chest and overflow the item filter. Then the honey block will go back to the system and end up in the dispenser. That will break the farm because the dispenser cannot harvest honey with a honey block inside. Now, when the storage chest is full, all the excess honey blocks will end up on the ground waiting to despawn. By having the anti-overflow system, you don't have to clean up the chest regularly and worry about breaking the farm. The best news is my design works on both Java and Bedrock edition. However, there are two things to keep in mind if you build it on Bedrock. First, do not use upper slab above the bees as the bees can escape through the gap on Bedrock. You should use upside down stairs instead. The reason why I use slab on Java is because there is no smooth stone stairs in Minecraft. Mo Yan, where's my smooth stone stairs? Second, the comparator cannot detect the block inventory behind a target block. 
Why, Mo Yan? Please explain. You have to move the target block under the dropper and connect it with the redstone dust. These are the only two things that bedrock players should know. I actually made a compact version of this farm, but I don't really recommend it. The main reason is if you don't confine the bees in a single block, they push against each other which lower the farm efficiency. As some of the bees get pushed away and fail to collect pollen for a period of time, some other bees get pushed far away and they take longer time to return to the nest because it's just too crowded. If you still want to do this compact version, check the alternate compact design at the end of this video. The last thing I want to talk about is the chunk loader and where to build this farm. This farm is 48 blocks long which can be fit inside 3 chunks perfectly. On Java, press F3 and G to turn on the chunk border. If you play on Bedrock, check Silent Whisper's video to learn how to find a chunk border. You should build this farm inside 3 chunks like here and build a chunk loader next to it in the middle. This chunk loader will keep the 9 chunks running so nothing will break even if you are far away from this farm. It's hard for me to tell what could go wrong when part of the farm is in a loaded chunk. So it's the best to play safe and use a chunk loader to keep everything in line. It also allows you to do anything else in anywhere without AFK next to the farm. Check your Mango's tutorial if you don't know how to build a chunk loader. I will put their video's link in the video description. For the location to build this farm, I would say it's the best to build it on the nether roof. It is because there is no daylight cycle and it does not rain in the nether, so the bees will be working all the time. It is also easier to spawn proof the farm on the nether roof. If you don't have access to the nether roof, it would be fine to just build it in the nether. Just make sure to protect it with stone bricks and spawn proof the entire farm using carpet or button. The last thing you want is a guard shooting a fire charge at the farm. Even though there is also no daylight cycle and it does not rain at the end, it's just more complicated to build a chunk loader there. That's why I don't recommend to build it at the end if you are not familiar with the end portal mechanics. Feel free to build this at the overworld if you think the nether is too dangerous for you. The farm efficiency would be half or more as half of the time is night time and it rains some time. It's the safest place to build a farm, but beware of the creeper. You might want to light up the surrounding areas. Alright, I think that's all the basic things you should know about the farm. Time to show you how to build this farm. Let's go! If you have any questions about the farm, join my Discord server and I will answer all your questions there. Also, go check my Patreon if you want to download the schematics and my creative agent world. Joining my Patreon will grant you lifetime access to our Minecraft server Potato SMP. Sometimes I design new farm on the server at the Ajax workshop. There you can watch me building and I will explain the farm mechanics to you. If you want to check my builds in game, you can visit the Ajax town where you can find most of my aesthetic farm design. I also have a survival base on the server for making the Ajax survival series. Join us now and build all the aesthetic farm together. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. I will see you there.